the beginning. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, Son of God. The Genesis. The beginning, the start. Here is where the new creation begins. Here is where we get a chance to refresh, renew, be inspired, be transformed. The beginning of the good news. What follows is the gospel. The good news. The story is good and true and pure and right. The beginning of the good news. The story from here at this point in the life of Jesus is the good news. From baptism through crucifixion. Every point in between the two is the good news. Not just the beginning. Not just the end, but the beginning too. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Jesus. Joshua, he who saves, he who rescues, he who delivers, the Christ, the Messiah, the anointed, the one from God, the Son of God, the Savior, Redeemer, bringer of salvation, Jesus. There is so much to your name, there is history and hope. Your name is a cry for help, a saving cry, a shout given when in need of rescue, your name comforts in all its forms and wonders. Speak comfort to me now. As we call out Savior, as we call out for rescue, as we need one to deliver us, as we need help, we need the Son of God, the human one who understands our pain, the one who can be in solidarity with us and through us, the one who saves forgives, suspends the rules. Jesus Christ, Son of God, hear our cry, our hope. Draw near and rescue us. So, if you haven't guessed, the Gospel of Mark is my favorite book in the entire Bible. And so I have a million poems that you're going to hear this year from the Gospel of Mark. Even on the same verse, that was just two of them. The beginning. The Genesis. This is where it starts. So in the Bible, what are the very first words you read when you pick up your Protestant Bible and open them up? It says, in the beginning. Well, before that, it says Genesis, which means in the beginning. When you open up the Gospel of Mark, which should be the first Gospel, because it's the first one written, but they didn't put it first, because this is the birth story. This is Jesus' birth story. This is the story that was written first, the beginning. Because Mark wanted you to think of this story at the beginning, like the way the Bible started in the beginning. That this is the beginning of the good news. The beginning. As the Bible starts with God creating everything that is known and is good, we are invited to enter the story and remember the beginning. For this is a new story, a new beginning, and it's good. As we start this journey, we are invited into a new type of story, a gospel, the good news, a story of the good news, a word that was invented for us to understand what we hear when we hear the story of Jesus. And so this is where I'm going to digress from my written word. When I took a course called Preaching a Celebration, where you learn how to preach um, in the African-American tradition of preaching, in the black tradition. Um, the main thing about the black tradition of preaching is that you always end with the good news. And so I did not get the best grade in this class because I argued with the professor over what the good news was. Because when you hear the words good news, what do you think? So every black sermon is going to end 
It was dark that day. It was so dark. It was so dark. But then the light began to shine. The dawn came and Jesus was raised from the dead. The good news. Well, I argued with him and said, according to the Gospel of Mark, the good news starts at verse 1. The good news starts not in chapter 16. The good news starts at verse 1 in the Gospel of Mark and is the entire story. And in the Gospel of Mark, there isn't even a resurrection. It ends in mystery. And so he told me that wasn't the good news. And I said, maybe if you're preaching, but if you're telling me that I'm supposed to preach the good news, I have to preach it from the way I experience it. And I experience the good news from the beginning of the story to the end of the story. The good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. The Gospel. Something that has been associated with death and resurrection. But here in Mark's story, we aren't just to focus on the end. For birth doesn't end with resurrection. It ends with mystery. So this is more than an end. The good news is about Jesus Christ, Jesus the Anointed, Jesus the Son of God, Jesus the Holy One. How do we enter this story? Before I took David Rhodes' class on the Gospel of Mark, I would have told you it was my favorite story because it doesn't have a lot of extra words. Right? Like, when Jesus goes and helps someone, he doesn't give you four paragraphs of why he's doing it. He just does it. He just does what is right in front of him to do, and the talking isn't what is important. So I would have told you that I liked it because it was simple, it was quick. But then I took Dr. Rhodes' class, and he wrote this book called The, the Gospel of Mark, The Story of Mark. And because of his class, where I read every commentary on the Gospel of Mark, I have them all on my shelf. So just in case you really don't believe me that this is my favorite book, I know it inside and out. That this book has changed the way I think about Jesus and the way I shape my ministry. That this story is meant for you to read it from verse 1 to verse 16, 18. 16a. Don't ignore the part afterwards that says the church added this ending. Or the alternative ending of the Gospel of Mark. In other words, that's not supposed to be there, but the church didn't like that it ended the way it did. Because Mark has a goal. Mark wants you to read from verse 1 to 16a. Because he wants you to make a decision. He wants you to enter this story and choose this moment of discipleship. He wants you to enter this story and choose Jesus and then go share this story. So did you know that you can read the gospel in two hours and 30 minutes? It is meant to be a mystery, a short story. It was given to you to be performed. <laughs> That when people read the Gospel of Mark, they didn't read it. Someone came into town and shared the entire Gospel of Mark as if you were attending a play. So you heard it from verse 1 to verse 16.8. And 16.8 was the altar call. It was the point at which you were invited to enter the story on your own. Dr. Rhodes opened up the Gospel of Mark to me in ways that have changed how I read the story and how I understand the Gospel. Part 
heart of the intent of the gospel becomes clearer when we see the whole story from beginning to end, not just the little chunks we get during a Bible study or a sermon or the year in the lectionary given to the Gospel of Mark. Dr. Rhodes challenged me, and now I'm challenging you, to read the entire story. When I teach confirmation, I make them read it because how many of you have ever sat down and read one of the Gospels in its entirety in one go? And if you don't read it as a story, as a complete story from beginning to end, you miss the entire point and movement of it. You miss what is being said in this Gospel. The words call and invite you into the journey of discipleship. So this year, we're going to try to hit every passage, except maybe Mark 13, because I'm not a big fan of Mark 13. But we will try to hit every passage in the Gospel of Mark so you can start to live the story, hear the story, experience the story, get moved by the story. Because the good news becomes a call to enter the story after it is ended and take up the call. The good news shows us how God's reign has drawn near. We experience the healing power of God over sickness and evil. We experience the invitation to become part of the kingdom, welcoming back into community tax collectors and sinners women and Gentiles, the sick and the excluded and the lost. Jesus teaches us how to live together and to create a relationship with God and with each other. The good news teaches us to question and challenge the powerful, to challenge power with love. The story is an invitation to you. Not only are you invited to hear the good news, you're invited to take up the story, to become part of the story and share the good news. There's a story found in native traditions in one tribe where it's, and this may be apocryphal, but I'm going to use it anyway. It's a story that says that to travel on long journeys, to move from one place during the summer to the next place in spring and summer and fall, the travelers navigated by singing a song as they journeyed, a song that was a road map by which they could remember changes in direction and key landmarks. The song would change as the hunting grounds changed with the season. Their song charted a course for the season. How do you want to chart your course? Do we need a song to sing as we go? One of the ways we can read the Gospel of Mark is as a song to sing that guides us through our life story and the journey with God. When we see how Jesus interacts with the lives of people he encounters, we see the people's lives being transformed and their stories changing. The story of a people being renewed and healed makes it possible to envision our own renewal and our own healing. So we begin this new year with chapter one of the Gospel of Mark. The story opens with the beginning. The good news of Jesus Christ, Son of God. This is the new beginning. The new story that God is going to share with us. As we enter God's story, as David Rhodes says, a world of conflict and suspense, a world of surprising reversals and strange ironies, a world of riddle and hidden meaning, a world of subversive action and political intrigue. And the protagonist, Jesus, is the most surprising of all. To enter Mark's story is to enter a world where you join the story and become a means to help bring God's kingdom. The story challenges us to see the world differently. The story challenges us and invites us to act to make the story real for God and for us. 
the beginning of the good news. The story from here, this point in the life of Jesus is the good news. From baptism through crucifixion, every point in between the two is the good news. Not just the end, but the beginning. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. 